ٹون بھی سکتے ہیں ہیلو السلام علیکم گڈ مارننگ خوش آمدید جی آیا نو خوی مرخ بخیر آگلے نی ہاو تو نشم میں وش ملے او ہائی گڈ زائمز گڈ مارگن اولا بو یور پریویت کیف حال حال شما چطورے اہلن و سالن مرحبا بونا موچو گراسیا سوابی آپ اور ایک بہت امیزنگ گڈ مارننگ تو ایوری باری ایوز کیون انٹو پی ٹی وی ورلڈ اور ایک واشنگ بال دس مارننگ لانگ سے دی بری فنٹاسٹک Hello Shiza, how are you doing on a very fine Friday morning over here in Islamabad? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for asking Jumma Mubarak to everyone watching. As I always say on every Friday, do not forget to remember Shazad, myself and my entire team in your prayers because, exactly. well, we are always in need. Uh, well, you called me culturally appropriate. Yes. This is cute. I mean, I really like this term for me. Well, it's Friday, of course. Why shouldn't we look Pakistanis? Yes, we are. Exactly. And, you know, this, this was the same thought which actually came across my head. And ladies and gentlemen, let me be very honest and clear over here. that me and Shizabi definitely you know in the initial phases we definitely did try to you know kind of match our clothing yeah. <laughs> colors and whatnot but eventually you know as a coincidence and it happens quite often as well that you For know real. we think likewise whenever we're wearing clothes as well not just that you know since she said that you know it's Friday and you know she she actually gave it a try to be culturally appropriate yeah. <laughs> I at the same time wanted to dress up like my Pakistani flag right so I picked up this green base coat and this uh, white chalwar kameez even though I wasn't very sure about this green base coat but my mother said yeah it's uh, working out great uh, you, you're looking cool <laughs> in it so I was like okay fine now I'm going to have a good show but do you feel like sorry yeah, I know yeah, you have a ahead. question but since you said like there are days when you feel like you know being super affiliated with your nationality yeah. or you know your own identity as yeah. well Do you feel patriotic in some st- uh, such stuff? Exactly. I feel patriotic every day. I mean, it, it is not dependent on the kind of clothing I'm going to uh, choose for myself. Okay. But, you know, when we speak about 23rd of March or 14th mm. of August or days like these, uh, you know, to be very honest, I think it's, it, it feels great to be uh, in association with your own flag or with the country yes. as well, which is great. And not just that. I think I have a great memory of this entire dress, which yeah. I'm wearing right now. And the great memory is... that I actually got the opportunity to host the Martyrs Day, which was uh, in March as well, ladies and gentlemen. And this was the same base coat which I was wearing, and this was the same chalwar kameez oh. which I wore for that day as well. <laughs> and yes, I feel lucky to be wearing it again as well, because I haven't worn it since then. Yes. That's What beautiful. about you? How's your day going so far? My day is okay so far, but something really put me off early in the morning. <laughs> and that? well, you know what? I feel like, Shazad, this is something a lot of people might neglect. Or when I say it, a lot of people might be like, oh, stop it. You're crying or you're ranting. When oh, I'm no. not, I absolutely hate the careless or the reckless bikers on road, Shazad. Right. I mean, you know what? I'll try to explain it. Yeah, Don't take me ahead. so hard on this as well. <laughs> so when you uh, talk about a public space, it yeah. is for each and every single person who's going to go there. And everyone has equal rights to utilize yes. it. Why cannot you be civil enough, or I want to say responsible enough, if not educated enough, yeah. to realize your rights in a proper way and not disrupt anyone else's life as well? Mm-hmm. I'm talking about bikers particularly, because if you are especially coming from Rawalpindi to Islamabad, dude, there are going to be like 50 times when you have to, you know, get into a shock because out of nowhere, oh. someone's going to come, come yeah, in yeah. front of you and you have to be careful for them. That's because true. I have no idea why they're not being careful for the people around them as well. And I think we're so, like, we're so easy to judge. jump on conclusions like Pakistan is a government is here who are we why are we not improving ourselves and I feel like individually if all of us start doing that yeah. Pakistan will be great as uh, it is already yeah, now. Yeah thank you very much for saying that and I did get a little offend over here because oh. of the fact that I'm a biker myself. But you're responsible when I've seen you. Yeah I, I try to be responsible but you know I'm going to second to what you actually said and I've seen a lot of people making mistakes and the people who are most vulnerable on road are the ones who are actually riding their bikes as well. Hmm. So I've come across situations where, uh, you know, it was a near death uh, kind of situation for me because uh, a lot of times, because I use Magla Road quite often, okay. you know, even when I'm riding my bike and I make sure that I'm within the speed limits. But these bikers, they have a very different way of doing things. So hmm. for example, if the person is on the other side of the road, all of a sudden he decides to be on this side of the road. So he's going to <laughs> make sure that he's going to lift his bike, put it onto the green belt and then... just come in between right and while I was on my bike I've, I've come across situations where I'm just going straight and all of a sudden from a green belt there's a bike coming in uh-huh. which is very dangerous and I've seen in situations that you know people who are actually riding bikes usually throughout the day or during the night as well you know they're not very well off okay. and uh, God forbid if you get into trouble if you get into problem because of them the 
uh, other than they, them helping you, I think you will be helping them. So please, ladies and gentlemen, I think everybody needs to be very alert while on roads as well. And not just that, there are a lot of animals these days crossing roads as well. Mm. So just be in the driving, uh, you know, the speed limits and make sure that you, you actually see ahead. Mm. Because if you're going to see ahead, you'll make sure that, you know, there's nothing coming <laughs> in between your way as well. So for all of those people, right lane is for overtaking, left lane is for driving slow. So please make sure that you remember this. Thank you for the basic education early no in the morning. Problem. I think we all needed that. But I feel, Shazat, we're talking about this after so long today because all of a sudden for a few weeks now, there is like a lot of traffic on the roads, a lot yeah. of people in places. Finally, Finally yes, it's a, it is a good thing, partially. Yeah. But I do, I mean, I want to say I feel for them as well. Mm -hmm. Imagine being locked up in your home for more than two months. And of course, I mean, eventually you think the lockdown is over and you just start mm -hmm. pretending Corona is over. You come out, that's another story. Yeah. But it does get to your mind, like we yeah, always say. It, does. it doesn't matter. I mean, regardless of the fact if you're a child, yeah. if you're an adult, if you're, a, I mean, an elderly person, any single person who is going through this pandemic is actually feeling the same. And so many different sort of, you know, thoughts come to your mind. You don't know how to deal with them because you're the only person with those thoughts. Exactly. So do you think it's getting hard for a lot of people? Yes, I think uh, I, I totally agree with what you've said and I think that you've made a very apt point over here as well because uh, there's a reason to that and mm -hmm. the, the reason is that, you know, since uh, it's Corona and over here, you know, this is a kind of pandemic or a disease where, where ladies and gentlemen, you have to isolate yourself. Yeah. And uh, especially for human beings, you know, uh, being social beings as well. It is very hard for us to not to talk to anybody, you know, for, for the next following 14 days right. when you're in isolation or in quarantine as well. And so hence when you are all by yourself, you know, there's so many different thoughts which come across your head. You're not sharing it with anybody else. So, you know, it's not helping anyways. You, you will feel that, you know, there's anxiety. You will feel that there's palpitations. You will feel that, you know, God forbid, everything's going in the wrong direction. Right. And, you know, there comes a time because I have, I've quarantined myself twice, once hmm. for 21 days and once for 14 days. And yes, it does, it does get to you, you know, there's that time of the night where you cannot sleep, you, you, you're, uh, you're going through insomnia, or you're feeling that you cannot go, go down to bed and it's because of the fact that your mind is continuously, you know, in a struggle of thinking or what to do or what not to do and it's just, you know, I've come down to a point where, uh, where now I know for sure that, you know, it's just overthinking and you cannot help it until you realize. Right. And we've been saying it for the last two days as well that, you know, it is very important for everybody mm -hmm. to have a check whether your thoughts are in control mm. of you or whether you are in control of your thoughts. I think that this is something which we really need to talk about. And right. ladies and gentlemen, whenever we speak about depression and anxiety, there's one thing which makes me very sad with people uh, who are going through depression, not everybody. But a few of them and, and what they say is uh, or what they do is or what you feel from them is that they do not have this willingness to get better and, and they, they want to be in isolation for as long as they want. Right. And, uh, you know, the kind of medicines or the medications we have for people who are actually going through depression, usually what I have witnessed, uh, since mm -hmm. I'm not a doctor, so it's just an assumption as well, or probably I might be right. And that is that they give them pills which actually put them to sleep. And uh, there's no... Uh, kind of very constructive way where we can actually help people who are actually suffering from depression or anxiety. But to talk about this, ladies and gentlemen, we're very lucky that we've actually been joined by a psychologist. But not just that, before yeah. I introduce her, there's one thing which I feel that everybody needs to play a role if there's a person who's going through depression. Maybe right. your mother, father, doctors, psychiatrists, psychologists, everybody needs to come together and make sure that they provide that particular person the support system how do we do this? How do we kind of realize that there might be somebody who might have these symptoms as well? We were talking about palpitations, we were talking about blood pressure, anxiety, stress and all of these problems. To talk about, ladies and gentlemen, we're very lucky that we've actually been joined by a psychologist over here in the studios. She's none other than Ms. Sadaf Rahman. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum, good morning. Assalamu Alaikum, thank you so much for having me here today. Very glad to be here. Thank you very much for joining us. It's wonderful to have you. So you know what we have mentioned so far. But before I actually ask you a question, I think I will let Shiza ask you a question you and so then much. we'll move on. Yes, go ahead. Shiza. All right. So, Sadaf, to begin with, I think we're just directly going to get to the point because we have a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. So, like Shazad was mentioning, you know, he uh, eventually came to realize that he needs to be in control of his thoughts and everything. Now, we are mature or adults, right? Talk about teenagers or I want to say toddlers or even, you know, people of ages between 10 to 15 or even more, it's really, really hard for them to understand what depression is, but they are hit by it so bad. Yeah. And it's really hard for us or the parents to make them realize what it is. Let me know what they might be going through this, uh, you know, pandemic, this quarantine situation as well. And is it like going to be really bad for their mental health? 
Okay, so first of all, I would like to differentiate between the terms stress, anxiety, and depression. Oftentimes, yeah. the people use them, uh, you know, in a similar meaning. Uh, yeah, whereas stress is something that you experience on a daily basis uh, r in response to any stressor that you may be experiencing that may come with headaches, that may come with palpitations, uh, you may be having uh, trouble sleeping, or you uh, your appetite may be affected. Okay. Whereas anxiety is um, uh, just fear and panic of what's going to happen, and that mm. is uh, very common these days in terms of the pandemic because it's a new virus, uh, nobody really kn knows much about it. Right. Uh, whereas depression um, is uh, is associated with feelings of hopelessness, disappointment, mm. oftentimes anger, um, lack of appetite, insomnia. See, the thing is, um, stress, being in stress for a long period of time can lead to anxiety and depression. Okay. And so during the pandemic, all of us have been through stress for a period of months now, right, yeah. since March. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but when we talk about kids, uh, these symptoms are depicted in a different way. Kids okay. may not be able to say, oh, I'm feeling sad today, I'm having trouble sleeping. They might um, be more agitated more than usual. Mm. They might uh, report somatic complaints. They might tell you they have stomach aches all the time, headaches all the time. So for kids, it's more in terms of uh, somatic complaints than in terms of feelings and emotions. They're oh unable God. to express that. Yeah. So you have to detect with them rather than yes, you know them. Yes, definitely, definitely. Parents should be keeping in touch with their children, talking to them often, and um, not only uh, giving them information about what's going on so they can mm -hmm. make some sense of it, but not too much information so they're not scared. Exactly. Makes and, sense. and that's great. Thank you very much for actually uh, you know, making us learn whether that, that there's a difference in between stress, anxiety, right. and depression, which we knew, but yes, I think that it was useful <laughs> for our viewers as well. But now, very quickly, what I need to know is that, you know, as we say that, you know, being happy is good, hmm. and it's an emotion. So being sad is an emotion as well, and that's very mm -hmm. normal. People can feel sad, people can feel happy, right. people can feel either way as well. But now, let's just discuss for how long to be under stress do you think is dangerous for anybody and is not natural? Good question. Uh, well, stress works in different ways uh, for different types of people. For somebody who's been in constant chronic stress for a couple of weeks can translate into uh, in anxiety or depression. And for somebody who has good coping strategies, it may take them a couple of months as well. So it really depends on the person. <coughs> All right. Well, 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 that's great. But, you know, I, I think that, uh, that we really need to actually have a second opinion on this yeah, one as well. And for that, ladies and gentlemen, we're very lucky that we've actually been joined by Professor Dr. Mazhar Bhatti Sahib, who's a consultant psychologist as well. He's with us today. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Shahzad, how are you? So can you hear me? Yes. Shahzad, I'm fine. How are you? Absolutely Be perfect. Quick. I like the I like the energy you have early in the morning, and which is great. Sir, uh, so we have a guest over here. She happens to be a psychologist in the studios with us. Her name is Sadaf Rahman, and we were actually asking her whether for how long can stress be healthy and uh, till uh, after what point do we really need to go and seek out for help as well you know so because stress being sad are emotions which we cannot control but then they are natural as well at the same time hmm. but god forbid if they persist for a longer period of time what kind of repercussions can we have on us yes there might be a sadness restlessness indecisiveness negative thinking isolation low confidence Social adjustment problem can be uh, seen in the in the in the in the families in the in the people, and even that most of the people are fearful about their lives because there is a lot of social and adjustmental issues these days due to COVID-19. People are sitting in their fam in their homes with their families and kids. They are not going to share all these things with the masses. So when we are suggesting the repercussions. Definitely the social adjustment and the daily life routine activities, they are going to be disturbed by, by, by these people. So uh, it, it should be, it should be, it should be uh, maximized by, by relaxing their moods. Uh, they, they, they should uh, prepare their, uh, their mind for the prayers, religious activities, indoor games, uh, time spent with the families and social interaction. Due to COVID-19, we can we cannot expand because this disease required isolation. You know. Yes. 
Right, absolutely. But Dr. Masur, adding on to that, um, and this is a question for actually both of you, you and Sadaf over here too. Uh, when we talk about um, anxiety or stress uh, in quarantine, in the corona times especially, yes, I do agree with you if you engage with your family members in either, you know, indoor games or conversations or even movies and stuff, it does get your mind off things. But like Shazad said, when it's nighttime and you're alone and thinking of all of that, it's really hard to escape that, <coughs> pardon me, that stress that you might be going through. Yes. Now, you know, for, it's very natural for humans to be stressed or be anxious about the next morning, to be stuck in a loop or to think, you know, this is quarantine, it's going to go on for so long and every other day is going to be the same as the previous one. I mean, it's really, it does, again, get your mind as well. Yeah. Now, it's really easy for us to say or for, I want to say, professionals to say that, don't think about it. Tomorrow is going to be a different day. You can have something else to do. Yes, of course, it's natural there's going to be a different day, but the mind doesn't accept that. What should we do about that? That. Yeah, there's a lot of mindfulness related exercises. For example, mm -hmm. there's a uh, there's a thought stopping technique. For example, you can make deep breathing. For example, you can uh, do the yoga. For example, you can engage your cognitive components of mind in the positive thoughts and positive activities. It it okay. totally depends on the individual how he can channelize his cognitive component related, especially related to the thoughts. Because thoughts are uh, two types. One is relevant thoughts, second is irrelevant thoughts. Relevant thoughts are your positive thoughts and irrelevant thoughts are your negative thoughts that going to lead to you towards the sadness and depressiveness and anxiety and chronic anxiety. All right. But, but, but sir, adding to that, you know, what happens is that over here in Pakistan, I think it's only one or two percent of the population who actually love to work out or probably do yoga or probably do breathing exercises. Majority of the people have never ever been to a gym or have never tried to actually go out for a walk in the park as well. <laughs> right. Now when we speak about anxiety, when we speak about stress, when we speak about all of these problems, it's easier said than done. Hmm. And to get out of that thought process is very hard. And you know, I think I might, uh, I myself have gone through such situations as well, where I really have to grab myself or probably involve myself into another activity to get rid of that particular thought process. And whenever we go and meet somebody who's actually suffering from depression or anxiety or probably is having stress, you know, uh, whenever we, we try to tell them that, you know, okay, everything's going to be fine, you really need to do this, they're mm. not really willing to listen to us. So how do you think an individual himself or herself can actually be of help uh, for their own selves? Yes, Shahzad, they can do because this we will have to go by this COVID-19 and we will have to reshape our lives our timetable, our daily life activities, our mindset, our thoughts, our emotions, feelings. We can do, if individual wants to bring a change in himself, he can do. Willingness is the key point for changing the, the uh, lifestyle. All right. If exactly he is entirely like willing, he can, he can modify uh, behaviors, he can modify mind, he can modify thoughts. He, and he can modify all the uh, activities of the daytime. Right. Exactly. Thank you very much, Professor Saab, for being with us and taking our time. You know, you were full of energy and you definitely gave us some thoughtful advices as well. But then we come down to the same point. Uh, when I'm going to move back to Sadaf over here. Sadaf, let's talk about willingness. Uh, willingness is one thing which is always missing whenever we talk about depression, anxiety or stress. And as much as we do not want to, you know, feel the kind of feelings we get because of stress, anxiety and depression, you know, there's no willingness within within our own mindsets as well and it does not come from within. How do we generate that willingness? Well, um, unwillingness usually comes from the stigma that our society has around mental illness. Okay. So there's one way to curb that. Nowadays, things are getting better. There are a lot of uh, um, places that are offering therapy, a lot of Places are often offering even free therapy yeah. these days, so that's that's super great. Um, well, it's really important when you're going through something really difficult. You people often tend to just go into in themselves and yeah. not are not able to come out of it. It's really hard for a person to do that on their own. What helps is having a good social system around them and people who are supportive around them which is absolutely so important, but also not really common in our society. Unfortunately, we have to say that. Yeah. Like you mentioned, there's a certain stigma attached to it. Let's talk about that. And you know, before the show, when we were in conversation with you, we spoke about 
how we need sort of a holistic support system for that one person. Let us know who, uh, anyone who should be involved in that, you know, in making that support system. And is there any way, any way at all, where we can probably remove the stigma and make this something so common um, as a conversation that people should not be shy of it? And there's a reason why we're asking you this, because I've had a first-hand experience and then I've known it for sure that, you know, that when a person is actually going or suffering from depression, he or she actually has you know, a few people or a circle which they want to talk to, not right. everybody. And Absolutely. they're not comfortable in talking with everyone out there as well. So how do we do it smartly that the other person does not even get to know that, okay, we're actually trying to help him or her? Well, uh, reaching out uh, uh, is very difficult. And when somebody does do that, or if you see somebody struggling with something like that, it's, it's good to uh, extend a hand of help and to do it in a way that the other person doesn't feel overwhelmed yeah, by yeah. that it is definitely tricky. Um, I would suggest always asking somebody, um, do you need help or um, is there something I can do with you? And asking these open-ended questions can sometimes doesn't really drive any answers. Yeah. So maybe instead of asking, can I do something, bring over just lunch. Do yeah, just do something. Yeah. Bring mm. over lunch for them. That's call, good. check up on them instead of being like, oh, call me whenever you have trouble. Just call them every other day or like mm. on a weekend or something. So you really do have to, uh, you know, do something on your own and show that to the person yeah. that you're actually there. So what you're actually trying to uh, suggest over here is that, ladies and gentlemen, rather than, you know, texting somebody and saying, hey, you know what, I'm right here. You can call me whatever time you feel like. Rather, what you need to do is that you need to call that particular person just be like, hey, you know, I bought a bunch of flowers for you and I want to drop them at your doorstep. Would you mind opening your door? So probably I think that this might work. But I know, yes, it, it, it already put a smile on my face just <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> because we were talking about flowers, so yeah. I think yeah, that's, that's what it is. But now very quickly, with adults, obviously, uh, to an extent, you can judge. And, and you know that if somebody's having a problem. But with kid, it, kid, kids, it's, it gets very tricky. And just the other day, uh, I'm very sorry that <laughs> I'm going to mention my story over here as well. So my middle child, uh, she's very attached to me. Uh, her name is Meher Banu. And uh, so whenever I just go back from office, she's with me, you know, throughout the day. And she hugs me and whatnot. So the bond is very different. And uh, so the other day I was working and I was working on a project. So I had to use phone and attend her as well. So, so mm -hmm. I continuously use phone for like four minutes or five minutes. And she felt dejected. And she was just sitting somewhere in the room by herself, not talking and Aww. just like that. And, and she's so tiny, really bad. man. And I felt really bad. And I was like, what can I actually do to cheer her up? And mm. I couldn't cheer her up for another 10 minutes or 15 minutes. And I felt bad for myself. But that was something which I had to attend to. How do you think that parents can actually have that eye where they can observe that, you know, that there's something might be wrong with their toddlers or mm. kids while they're growing up? Right, so uh, children often uh, tend to get clingy when they're stressed out. Yeah. So that is one thing I picked up from that. P kids are very extremely stressed out. Uh, and also we live in a society where people tend to believe in myths, yeah. right? So uh, it's important for parents to uh, talk to their kids and see if they are holding any myths that may not be true and only disperse factual information. Yeah. And also I think uh, children need uh, predictability in their lives. And so do adults, but children uncert uncertainty really affects them. So mm. having a schedule, a rough schedule for every day, like uh, so you're going to wake up around this time, having a schedule for meals, mm. having healthy meals, but also fun meals, yeah. having downtime, having rest time and having study time, that gives some predictability, but also keeping your expectations very realistic and to keep that schedule flexible, yeah. not like, oh, four o'clock, you have to I do have homework, to do like, and you know, <laughs> it's okay. Mm. That's so Th cool. Things are uh, very complicated in the world right now. Yeah. So it's good to have a, a rough schedule. Yeah, and, and okay. this is good, and I can relate to it, Shiza, once again. I'm sorry that I can relate to everything she's I trying know. to say. I hope I'm not it's stressed. Amazing. But yeah, yesterday, because I was working, and I couldn't work out. So I was like, okay, you know, Shiza, for a day, you can actually relax. It's, it's particularly all right. You know, you're not going to lose all your muscle. We'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. Now, today, when I woke up, I was like, okay, I do not have time. I have to be on another shoot today. Uh -huh. and I was like, okay, you know, as soon as I get done with the show, I'll make sure that, you know, that my wife's actually going to handle or look after the babies, and that I will work out. And yes, it is very true that we really need to have a very rough schedule mm. or probably be very... A flexible adapt one, at Yeah, least. it needs to be uh, yeah, flexible. I think <laughs> that's... And that you need to be adaptable to, to that uh, particular raw uh, structure you have for yourself as well. And I used to say this as well, that ladies and gentlemen, for example, for me, working out every day, waking up and looking up to that 
is something which actually drives hmm. me, which, which gives me motivation that, okay, this is something which I'm going to do the next day. So you're very right that everybody needs to have a timetable, a schedule, and be flexible with it, which is great. Right, absolutely. But thank you so much for being here, Sadaf. You were a great conversationalist. We'd love to have you back, especially to talk more about this. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as usual, we try to bring something that might be helpful to you. So if you have any kids around you at home, or you know, even if your neighbors, or even if your extended yeah. family, I hope this helps you and spread the word as well. Well, you know, Shazad, stress not only does, you know, put you off or make, makes you antisocial, it sheds your hair I too. And in a lot of cases as well. <laughs> so what to do about that is what we need to talk about. But right after this short break, stay tuned to find out more. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Tent pegging is an equestrian sport practiced in many countries around the world. Wooden targets are placed on ground at a specific distance and players wearing traditional dress and turban have to run their horses and try to hit the target and pick it up with a lance. Target missing is considered as a failure. Tent pegging is thought to have originated in the subcontinent. Historians say that mounted soldiers would gallop through enemy camps, removing the tent pegs with their lances and swords. They would be followed by more mounted soldiers who took advantage of the surprise and havoc caused by collapsed tents and a confused enemy. Today, tent pegging is practiced around the world, but is especially popular in Australia, India, Israel, Oman, Pakistan, South Africa and the United Kingdom. The Olympic Council of Asia included tent pegging as an official sport in 1982 and the International Federation for Equestrian Sports recognized it as an official equestrian discipline in 2004. Public interest in the cities thus diverted these games of clamour, yet the landlords, bourgeois and the rural folk kept it alive. New and emerging national tent pegging associations have helped spread the sport's popularity. Welcome back to World This Morning, ladies and gentlemen, where every day we are here to educate you and learn along with you as well. Right now, I think this segment is going to be very interesting mm. because... <laughs> because <laughs> of the fact, ladies and gentlemen, that due to stress, anxiety, and uh, I'm not sure whether it's, it's common with depression or not, but we've literally seen that people, uh, for, for example, I've seen my father when he was in that phase of probably transcending from a lower background to getting a little richer, I think, was very stressful and he lost all his hair. Oh. Not him, not just him, my grandfather too. Oh. Not just him, you know, from the other side, from my mother's side as well. Uh, you know, so everybody pretty much in my family has lost all their hair. And uh, ever since I was growing up, the only things which I used to listen to was, you know, the, the city we live in, the water is not right for mm. your hair. And the next thing was, you know, put yogurt on your hair and it will do wonders. <laughs> Not just that, uh, use a wooden comb and you won't lose your hair. Uh, I mean, there's so many things. And the most common one is, mausame. 
Oh yeah, the weather. <laughs> it's the weather, and you know everything's going to be fine, and that you lose two thousand or three thousand hair whenever the weather is just like of this sort. My mother used to tell me, use soap for your hair. Do not use any shampoos, hmm. and your hair will be fine, which they were. And I had the, my hair was this long, oh, yeah. you know, just to be just to be very honest over here. But how to actually look after our hair in the first place, and not just that, ladies and gentlemen. For the very first time, I think that we have a dedicated field, hmm. uh, for, uh, and then there are people out there who are actually making sure that people look after their hair very well uh, not just their physical appearances but i think their you know, the appearance of their hair too as well which is very important and as soon as i walked into my makeup room today she said you know for your industry hair is very important so ladies <laughs> and gentlemen we're very lucky that we have actually been joined by a trichologist and a cosmetologist over here she's none other than Ms. Farooq Nasheen. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Wa alaikum assalam. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. It's most welcome. And it's wonderful to have you. But Thank there's you one much. thing which I cannot get my head around, and that is that a trichologist herself is dyeing her hair. <laughs> Why would you do because, so? Because people say that it's dangerous for your hair. Right. No, it's not dangerous okay. at all. It's uh, in fact, when you dye your hair, you look good. You look young. Yeah, but that's yeah, fine. But yeah, exactly. Do you lose and your hair because of the, all of that no, chemical no, no, you apply no. on your hair? That's a myth. Every okay. time you dye your hair, the hair keep growing, okay. and the scalp is that's inside. Okay. Inside no. layer, the yeah. uh, color doesn't harm. Uh, it, the harmful uh, we can have it on the topical okay. area, not on the scalp. All right. Oh, all right. So what you mean to say is the hair will get colored, but it's not going to yes. affect the roots from yes. where the hair grows. Yes. That's perfectly fine. Everybody's <laughs> going to go to a salon today. Yes. Oh, you <laughs> but we must today. not. But okay, that's great. So let us know, Farooq, how long have you been in this field, and how come you were so passionate about about becoming a trichologist that we heard for the first time? Um, basically, I'm trichologist and cosmetologist yeah, yeah. both yeah. because I love beautification. Okay. Every morning I get up, I wanted to look good, and my mission. For everyone, he he or she should look good. Of course. Because uh, whenever we talk about the hair and the beauty, the, uh, everyone relates with the female. Yeah. No one relates with the man. Come every, on. Every yeah. <laughs> everyone <Because> everyone <laughs> says you are male. You should not look good. You should Why look uh, bad. <laughs> and every woman wants us. Uh, pardon, ladies. Every <laughs> woman wants that every man should look very ugly and <laughs> <laughs> and bad. So my mission. Every man yeah. should look good. Hmm. It's his right. He sh if he's wearing a good dress, yeah. if is if his hair are well, <laughs> right. he, he, if he's appealing, it's better for him. Yeah, I, and, yeah and of course. Psychological health as well. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, when you say looking good, it means, of course, when you take about your physical take care about your physical appearance as well, you feel good. I mean, compliments are one thing, but generally, I feel you feel good as well. Yeah. You know, Shazad, what yeah. happens with me? Yeah, so sorry, ahead, I'm cutting you over here. When we talk, when when I have exams, of course, I'm stressing out so much. Even when I just you have to prepare. <laughs> <laughs> no, even when I just have to prepare for my test or my exam. For feel for feel good measures, yeah. I put on lipstick. Okay. I'm not going anywhere. Just I'm sitting in the living room, yeah. but that makes me feel good. So yeah. I think that is what you feel yes, like. Yes, that's saying. I'm saying. What? Because now, uh, in everyone is uh, staying at home, and people are not m putting makeup right. on because they are feeling so much depression. They are staying home. They are not combing their hair. But I think when I was uh, in lockdown, mm -hmm. uh, every day I was getting up and I was preparing my makeup. Everyone was saying, "Where are you going?" Yeah. I say, "No, nowhere. I'm staying at." Home. Hmm, doing I it for myself. Yes, yeah. doing it for myself. I wanted to look good. Yeah. We're saying, everyone is saying, my maid was saying, Baji, what happened to you? <laughs> <Cute>. Are you <laughs> all right? <laughs> which is nice. which is great. And I think that I've gotten an uh, answer to one of the questions which I had long ago when I was in my college and my university days as well. That every now and then when I will actually get a compliment, you know, women would actually be like, Oh, you know, you look cute today. <laughs> I mean, what kind of a compliment is cute for for a person who's actually going to, uh, you know, university and is doing his bachelor course and whatnot? And I was like, you know, why can't you guys just call me handsome and whatnot? So I think that that's a valid point. Women do not want men to look good, but which actually comes from the horse's mouth because herself, uh, ladies every, and gentlemen. Uh, every man is coming and he's ask, asking for the hair transplant in their procedure, other procedure. When I ask him, uh, he says, my, I don't want to show up to my wife. I want to keep it hide. I want to keep it sec uh, secret. I ask him, why? What happened? Because she don't want me to look good. Yeah. So my message for ladies, if your husband, your brother, your father, if he look good, you will feel yeah. better. Yeah, yeah, yeah that I'm, does even make my sense. My father wanted to get a hair transplant, but my, my mother didn't let him. Yeah, so <laughs> that's just sheer truth. Uh, yeah. I mean, but I come just on, got ladies are so cruel. Which is great. But now let's let's talk hmm. about uh, how to look after our uh, hair health. 
and what things to do and what things not to do. Let's talk right. about it. Quickly. First of all, you need to maintain your zinc, vitamin D level. Mm -hmm. You need to look after your general health. If your general health is good, your hair will look better. And normally, every people wants, every day, everyone asks me a question. Why you are not keeping your hair long? Why your hair are short? I'm a working. I, I don't like long mm -hmm. hair. I am keeping keeping for the for people that, the, who are asking. I like short hair because okay. they are easy to manage. Yeah. People, you should understand that keeping long hair and they are frizzy and they are damaged, they will not look good. Absolutely. If you have short hair, then they will look healthy. They will look good. So first of all, everyone should shampoo their hair every day. Right. Everyone says, no, we are not applying shampoo. It damages our hair. If if there is a oil, if there is a dandruff, the dandruff will damage your hair. Yeah. Yes. No, but yeah, I, I agree with you. Of course, dandruff may damage the hair, but uh, our I want to say professional doctors have told us. I mean, when we talk about shampoos, we know how many yes. chemicals and whatnot. And like Shazad said, you know, there was a time when you were suggested to use a soap as well. I've heard these things so many times. So right now, I want to come back to the totkas mm -hmm. that we hear every now and then. And you tell us if they're right or wrong. So you declared it's wrong to not, uh, like, to not use shampoo. We should be using shampoo, you yes, say. Yes, if you are uh, uh, worried about the chemical shampoo, you can make your own shampoo. Okay, okay. With Amla. The okay. previous one, our grandmothers, they were not, there was no shampoo. Mm. They were mm. washing their hair with Amla. When I was young, I was keep washing my hair with Amla. And that, that's very effective and very good because now it's difficult. Yeah. Everyone couldn't. So you can use, you can use organic shampoo. Oh, yeah, that makes sense, of yes. course. Yeah. So the next thing is, let us know about uh, the type of comb. Like Shazad said, a wooden comb yeah. might help you, you know, <laughs> reduce the hair loss as well. And does, like, the quality of water have something to do with the hair loss as well? Uh, Sometimes people uh, may notice, but the thing is this, there there is no sig significant uh, proof, proof for okay. this. Uh, normally, people who are facing the hair loss uh -huh. is due to uh, male pattern baldness. Okay. Number two is to the depression. Mm. Number three, the main reason is genetics. All right, oh, and, okay. and then there's another myth where people say that you know that if you're getting rich, you might lose hair. Yes. <laughs> do, do you agree to this? Yeah. yeah? Really? Okay, yes. I like that. Yeah. I like we are getting money for the hair transplant. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that, that's not the direction we're going in, but yeah, we're but generally asking you about different myths. Yeah. But this is one myth I've heard. And yeah. another okay. one is put, put yogurt on your hair. Hmm. Basically, yogurt is for the shaft area, this portion. Okay. When you are putting the yogurt and protein, it gives a good uh, shine on your hair. It's go uh, giving a good food to your hair. Yeah. So putting them is not harmful. Every, everything you can put that's not harmful, you know hair yeah. okay. you will get good results like we are talking about the onion yeah. onion is good when you put on the, your scalp that create a blood yeah. circulation increase blood circulation yeah. okay when you, it, uh, you will uh, get good uh, blood circulation your hair will look much better All right. and, and one more thing you know alongside the lines of yogurt or applying yogurt on your hair so there's this one thing which we have actually have to break to use it on our hair what is that and do you think that it is fruitful for our hair too <laughs> as well Sorry, I couldn't get Okay, this. so now, so it, it's, it's a tricky question and you yes. really have to guess it. Yes. It's along the lines of, you know, applying yogurt on your hair. Yes. So this this one other product which we have to break in the first place to use it on our hair. Yes. And do you think that it's beneficial for our hair? Uh, yes, uh, that's you're talking about the egg. Yes, I'm Absolutely. talking about the eggs, yes. <laughs> All right, so egg, egg is good for hair as well. Yes, very good because it's protein. Yeah. Here is the, uh, because. And we get keratin treatment anyway, so why not use the original protein, yes. right? Yes, and the keratin treatment when it gets off, it creates so much damage in your hair. I get all right. that. All right, so now coming to the most important question. A lot of ladies, I'm not saying all of them, but a lot of them have actually been avoiding salons or, you know, just generally getting themselves treated with people because of, of course, the pandemic going yes. on. Yeah. So if you're staying at home for so long, let us know some of the things that we can do for our hair to look better or fresh or new. Yes. You can new. apply it. <laughs> <That's good laughs> new. Enough. Brand hey, new. look at my hair. I'm it's a new hair today. Yes. <laughs> And the first of thing that he was talk, uh, asking me to guess that the egg, egg is very good. Okay. Onion water is very good. Even garlic water is uh, very, very good. Smelly. Very smelly. Yeah. But very smelly. <laughs> but yeah. very smelly. But we have masks yes. nowadays, so why not? <laughs> yeah, the multiple masks over there. 
And the thing is this, just wash your hair uh, daily and apply a little bit moisturizer like a conditioner on the lower ends okay. and just uh, keep applying oil. The, uh, the many oils like bathic oil, they do not, they, uh, they do tangle less your hair. When their ha hair are less tangled, you will look much better and much good. Exactly. Okay. And, and, but then, you know, I think that it's difficult because I know for myself as well, when I used to have very long hair, I'm, and people okay. who have actually seen me in, in that I've seen your audition. In that shape, yes, it was, <laughs> you know, they can pretty much relate to it as well. But then we use these uh, irons on our hair, mm. then we use these different products like hairsprays, gels, You lost hair your hair, well. sorry to bother, you lost your hair due to genetic factor because yes. li like your beard is very good. Yeah. Yes, the back area is very good, yeah. only the problem is hair, yeah. so it's the male pattern balance. Yeah, that's fine, but I've been using straightener, I've been using waxes, I've been using gels. I guess you are missing that product. Due to <laughs> <laughs> I am missing all of that, but I'm glad, I'm thankful. But to you are not Almighty applying anything uh, as I saw you in the microphone. Not lately, of course but not. you're not <laughs> applying anything now. So, okay. I am fine, but that's not what I'm asking. What I'm trying to ask is that use of the Generally. iron straighteners, yes, they, hair they create, dryers. If you are uh, using it again and again, obviously it creates damage. Yeah. You need to avoid it. Do not do it every time. Even you are going on the function, on some wedding area, then you can do it. But the people who are getting up early in the morning and applying yeah, straightening. Yeah, that's me because I have such a job. Yeah. <laughs> but your hair Doing is it quite day. good. Thank you so much. I keep trimming them myself. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, thank you so much for being here. Very quickly towards the end, I want you to, as a cosmetologist, yes. give out a helpful message to all the people watching right now of how they can uh, take care of themselves yeah. during Which this. Which might help that's us That's very as simple. Well. Yeah. Eat good, eat healthy, stay happy and stay at home. All right, well, well, that's wonderful, you know, which is why, you know, I think I'm going to take another minute or two as well okay. and ask about our dietary habits as well and mm. how they have an impact on the health of our hair. Because normally the, our lifestyle, everyone is getting up, they are not taking proper breakfast, lunch and dinner. If you want to maintain your hair, you need to eat more, need to eat healthy, proper breakfast with the good zinc based uh, any any ingredient like porridge, uh, joka delia, like uh, yeah. very easy and uh, if you are a choker and if you wanted to keep will look good you need to eat proper lunch and proper dinner. Right. So these important. Three thing, yes, the, if you are following these three things you will look good and your hair will be maintained. Exactly, Thank well you. that's great and we want our hair to be healthy and healthier as well ladies and gentlemen. Nobody wants to lose their hair <laughs> because God forbid if they do they might lose something else too as well which I'm not going to mention on screen. But thank you very much, Ms. Farouk, for being with us. It was lovely to be in conversation. Thank you And very yes, much. Do, you, you definitely look very good as well. Yeah, thank you very thank much you very for looking much. after yourself. <laughs> and there's this one thing, ladies and gentlemen, which I've realized in my life, and that is that the day when I look good and somebody compliments me is the best day of my life. Really? Well, that's brilliant. Of course, compliments make your day as well. Well, I think this was sort of a productive show in terms of, you know, creating or I want to say imparting information as well. I hope this helped you. Ladies and gentlemen, take care throughout the weekend. Stay safe, stay home and keep writing to us on our Facebook page with the name of Wall This Morning on Twitter on w Twitter it's yes. Wall This Morning without G on YouTube on YouTube it's PT Wall and you look for the most viewed show which is Wall This Morning and the repeat of this show you the can repeat, catch ladies and gentlemen the repeat timings have been changed uh, you know earlier they were 5 past 11 p.m. Uh, but now it's 5 past midnight so yeah. that you can actually get a feeling of a morning show once again <laughs> or twice in a day well not really technically not twice in a day, but obviously, you know, if you've watched our uh, repeat, which is at five past midnight, and then if you're watching it live as well, so this it's like two shows in a day. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we try to keep <laughs> rocking you as well, but please make sure that you stay safe. And everybody who's actually suffering from COVID-19 or probably any other disease, we pray to Allah Almighty that may you get well as soon as possible. Amen. We're in this together and we will come out stronger and better as well. Please look after yourselves. One, two, three. Good, Good morning. morning. Take care.
Pakistan.